So to be able to tune my turbo box body project, I first sought to replace this with this. But now, since that didn't work, I have to replace that with this. No wonder they call it a micro squirt. Tiny. So after just a few weeks of me banging my head against the wall, figuring out what the hell I did wrong, and uh, then racking up some of my debt a little bit more, not even the mail could stop me from getting what I need to make sure I can tune the Fox body here. So I did order a few things online to help make that a possibility. And it is, it's gonna be a much better uh, result in the end. It's gonna be definitely the correct way of doing it rather than the way I was trying to do it. So uh, yeah, it did cost me a lot more money, but in the grand scheme of things, it isn't really all that much money considering the type of tuning and capability I get. So. Let me show you. As you may know, this is the factory EEC4 computer from the, uh, the car here. Uh, this is what I pulled out, and this came out of a 97 Ford Ranger, which is a EEC5, so an OBD2 compatible um, ECU. And it's, it's, I was gonna use that in conjunction with a OBD2 tuner to be able to calibrate things um, on the car for the turbo, at least just to get it running, right? Because I'm stupid and I messed up on pinning the connector. I am human, I make mistakes, not to mention I am learning. I'm learning as I'm doing this. Making mistakes kind of par for the course here, so you know, it's like, it, it's really how you learn. And it's like the best way to do so. And it's also the best way to make yourself spend money, <laughs> so. But with that, I did order this. Now you all know, I'm sure you've heard of Mega Squirt. Been around a very, very long time. And um, it's definitely one of the more affordable, full-fledged, uh, standalone ECU tuning solutions on the market out there. And they definitely have catered, um, a very popular with the Fox bodies and the older cars and stuff. Very, very popular. But they can still be used on new cars. And this is actually a really cool um, piece right here. So this is a much newer product they have called the Microscore. And that's because it is tiny, but don't let the size fool you. It is a full-fledged, engine management system right here in this little box. It just shows you exactly how far technology has come. I mean, we all know, you know, processing units and stuff get smaller and smaller. So now stuff like this can be packaged into stuff like that. And it's probably a lot more powerful in terms of processing power anyway on a device like this. So yay for technology advancements. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what's gonna be the new control system for the car. And this is what I'm going to use to tune the vehicle. This will allow basically real-time laptop tuning capabilities. Uh, but it's not just this that's gonna make it all work. Let me get the box of parts out and show you uh, all the stuff that it's needed to make this work correctly. So in this box here, I have everything that's gonna make this work. Uh, actually, this is kind of part of the delay um, to this whole video and project anyways, because my dumb self didn't order the connector to the, uh, the ECU. So this is basically, it's called a, um, if you're not familiar, it's called a amp seal connector and it's what uh, the Microsquirt uses to plug in. And I'm not sure if I'm going to need, see it comes with a whole set of pins. Uh, they're slightly smaller and I guess they're better at, they look like they're, they're probably better to grip onto the pins and make sure they make a nice connection, but I really don't feel like doing all of that. If I didn't already unpin the factory connector, you can find a harness that's already pinned up and ready to go. And that does that, just plug and play. So that's a nice thing, but um, I have to make things hard for myself. So there's that. And uh, right here is a really important thing. So this is a GM three bar map sensor. Uh, this is what's gonna basically help. This is one of the most important things when it comes to boost tuning. Um, and considering that I'm gonna switch over to a speed density setup and not use a mass airflow sensor, uh, this is how I'm gonna measure my boost levels. And that's that. And this is a little connector that goes to that that I'm gonna repin uh, the factory map sensor because there is a map sensor on these cars, but it's I guess it's for more or less like barometric readings, but whatever. 
um, and it's not even hooked up to anything, but I'll use its factory location and the wires. Most importantly, we have this right here. Now this is a Innovate Motorsports um, wideband O2, not a gauge, but it is the whole control system that basically uh, hooks up to the computer. So like I said, I'm still learning all this. This is all new to me. So as, as much as it is exciting, it's also scary because I don't really know what I'm doing with any of it um, for the most part. Oh, comes with stickers. You know how I am with stickers and a little, I'm not gonna put that on my car, but definitely add this to the uh, sticker wall there. The O2 sensor plugs into this harness here like that. So that will go onto the car, that will feed up. Then you got this harness. This harness then plugs into this harness. And then <laughs> this harness, um, I guess can go out to a gauge. I guess that's what these are for, out, in. So, this goes out to a gauge, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I really am not. So I got four four wires here. I have to look at some directions and see what's going on. But this is basically so I have a wideband um, O2 sensor on the car. All right, so without any more delay, I'm gonna get started here on installing this. I am deleting the mass airflow sensor, so I don't need that. I am deleting the EGR system, so I don't need that. I'm deleting uh, the AC system because it really wasn't hooked up anyway and I won't need that anyway. Why? You got a convertible, put the top down, enjoy the air in your hair, unless you don't have any, but don't need anything that goes to that either. So I'm gonna definitely clean up the harness and the engine bay with deleting a lot of these nonsense wires. And I'm also deleting the secondary ignition coil. No need for it. And I need to free up the spark plugs on the other side of the block. And that's for a future uh, idea I have that's gonna be pretty cool once it's all said and done and it'll be really important for a turbocharged setup. So yes, there is that. Now, as like I did with the screw up on the uh, installing the Ranger ECU, I will not be filming getting everything wired up because it's just a pain to bring a camera along. I need to focus. I need to really get this car running so I can get it out of the garage. I got other things I need to be doing in here and I need the space. So it's a beautiful day. I need to take advantage of every bit of time and do it as quick as possible without screwing up. Not recording this, but once I get hooked up and hopefully hooked up right this time, I'll bring the camera back for more exciting things and then we can uh, continue along with the project. Cool? Cool. So here's a little update on everything. It's been a few days since that last clip. It is really cold out here, so I have to take my time. Uh, but this is what I've gotten done. I'm not done pinning the connector yet. I'm very, very close. I just did this, um, which I hope is going to be sufficient enough to uh, communicate with the uh, micro squirt. This is just a regular USB serial cable. I hope this works the same way. I theoretically, th I mean, it should. So this is the Innovate O2 sensor controller. I think I'm gonna put it right there just like that. I have some Velcro adhesive to stick it on the back there. Go just like that, it's nice and neat. The only thing I need to use are these three wires right here. Uh, so of course you got your 12 volt signal, which is your red, your ground is black, and then your, uh, your signal wire that's gonna go to the micro scores, this yellow one. That is pretty much all of the wiring there. And the only thing left to do Assuming all of that is correct, the only thing left to do is uh, under the engine bay, which I cannot see because there is no light. All right, so the only things left to do under here are... But this is where I'm gonna mount the GM map sensor, and this is the wires that I tapped in that I'm gonna use. So the connector's here. Actually, I'm gonna have to re-pin the connector with a supply connector that's gonna work to GM sensor. And I'm gonna reuse this bracket, and well, I'm gonna clean it up first. This looks a little nasty, but yeah, that's the only other thing left to do. And theoretically, we should be ready to go. Oh, I also have to uh, install the O2 sensor under the car. For now, that's pretty much it. We're on the home stretch here, so I'm gonna keep working. And uh, once I get everything set up, I'll come back and add a little bit more to this video. And uh, yeah, so. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far because I'm not. <laughs> this is really being a pain in the butt. 
especially working out here in the cold. So, all right, well, bear with me. I'm gonna get a little bit more done here and I'll see you in the next clip. One eternity later. Oh my God. What's actually really funny is that last clip uh, was approximately, what, about a week and a half ago? Maybe longer. Oh my God. I did not think Look, everything I do seems to be just a giant, ginormous pain in the ass. Uh, I did not think this was going to be a super big pain in the ass. I knew there were going to be hurdles. I knew there were going to be things, but I need to wrap up this video before I continue any more in this series. So with this clip, I do want to give a update on all the stuff that I've been doing since that last one. Pardon me, my uh, Harbor Freight flashlight decided to break on me and uh, I don't feel like getting the plug-in light out. So, phone flashlight will have to do. Now you should be able to see this perfectly fine and how much of a mess this is, but uh, let, me, let me show you exactly what's been going on. So, I've gotten mostly everything hooked up. And uh, if you notice, there's something a little bit different here between the micro squirt and everything else is because my stupid self learn from my mistakes. Do not hesitate to buy the harness for the mega squirt. It is worth every freaking penny that's in the price. You know why? Because if, first of all, I'm not really good with wiring. Maybe if you're really, really, really good with wiring, it won't have an issue. But I had an issue with pinning the connector. I had an issue with getting the, uh, I like made the, you know, the makeshift, where is it? Here it is, you know, a serial to USB cable here, which I didn't even know if it worked or not because I couldn't get everything to seat correctly in that uh, amp seal connector. They're very, very kind of hard to get the pins right on. So needless to say, if you're ever getting a dang micro squirt or whatever, just pay the extra money and get the harness. It's worth it. So with this harness, I got everything to communicate properly. And I was able to get the car uh, up and running in Tuner Studio and got some things figured out. So I did a lot of permanent wiring, you know, tried to do it right. I did use uh, butt connectors, but I heat shrinked everything and did it right. And then I noticed there was a lot of things that wasn't working right and therefore had to go back. So there's just a lot of unfinished wiring in here that I had to go back and do. But mostly I think everything I need to use is hooked up. I had to go and add an extra relay here for the fuel pump because it wasn't working otherwise. Mostly everything I think I'm gonna use is hooked up here. Once I figure out what I need to do to get, you know, the car running right, um, I'll go ahead and obviously tidy all of those uh, connections up and get it wired and, and tucked in and looking nice. Aside from the wiring, a couple of things that have happened behind the scenes here um, is I took some time and in order to and let me remove this because don't need it. Give me here. There it goes. I had to have this hooked up because of the intake air temperature sensor. So that's working right. Uh, I had to borrow some wires from uh, the Cobra. Some left over ones, so it kind of looks weird. These are just sticking up like that. The uh, uh, wires that were on here end up touching the exhaust manifold and they, they melt it, so obviously that's not good. Uh, I took some of the AC lines out. As you can see, that's all gone. Eventually I will drop the compressor, don't need that. Um, took the air box out. Got rid of a lot of unnecessary things. Now, if you look very closely, I don't even know how well you can see, probably pretty well. The, down in there, drilled a hole in the through the firewall and ran the cable for the O2 sensor, which is goes right here. And that's the wide band right there. And eventually it will be somewhere back here with the turbo set up where the turbo is going to sit. But in that general location, so that's nice. You know, I actually did try getting the car up and running and I did, was able to get it to idle. And I was pretty happy about it, but that was it. Because there was like some issue, I don't know, with the micro squirt, with the car, or with Tuner Studio, where it's only idling in... Um, at 100% load, which I find very annoying. 
because I can't tune it otherwise. It will, you know, it's not using the whole VE table. I have to get that problem figured out, but that's for another video and uh, another time. But this is it for now, and I got most of the hard stuff out of the way. Um, I know the car runs, I know the wiring's mostly right. There's pr definitely some things I need to figure out, and I gotta get in touch with people who know what they're doing, because I don't. And hopefully we'll have this purr in here very shortly and get it running. Once we get it running, nice, then we can start actually doing some of the turbo swaps up. I want to get it running good on its own first. That's obviously, uh, you know, pretty important. But that is it for this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next video.